first story comes from Decrypt.co and the developer known as Zap, known for its work on the Bitcoin Lightning Network, has released a new app called Strike, which sets out to make it even easier for anyone to use Lightning. Now, the app will allow customers to make payments on Lightning using a debit card or bank account. Now, the Lightning Network remains experimental as well as complex to interact with, and non-custodial wallets require setting up more of a dedicated and specialized Lightning node. Uh, with the barrier to entry currently being fairly high on utilizing Lightning, adoption has struggled to gain traction in recent years. Now, Zap is hoping that by dealing with the complicated Lightning details on the back end, it can encourage greater adoption, spurring more transactional use for Bitcoin. A Zap founder, Jack Maulers, announced Strike in a Medium post yesterday. Let's actually find that. Here it is right here. I like a Medium post to start off with, yo. And he says, uh, Today, we are announcing Strike, an application that allows you to make lightning payments with your bank account or debit card. Adding, it's an application sitting on top of our infrastructure piece, Olympus, designed to usher in an era of Bitcoin that we believe has the best shot of achieving our mainstream hopes and desires. Now, what the Strike app will allow users to do is attach their bank account or debit card to the app, similar to how PayPal functions. Um, so from here, you can use, uh, you can use the, the app to pay for Lightning-enabled invoices directly, all while remaining incredibly simple and intuitive to set up, especially in comparison to setting up a Lightning node or managing your own payment channel. Now, this means that Strike can be used to buy or sell Bitcoin on the Lightning Network, performed by generating a purchasing invoice and paying for it with Stripe, Strike, excuse me, or vice versa, uh, as well as for remittance payments by easily shared QR codes or as a convenient means of internet tipping. You can literally use this for anything you want. Now, in order to deliver all the advantages of Lightning, such as cheap and instant Bitcoin micropayments while eliminating the drawbacks, Zap has had to make trade-offs. Uh, you know, this comes down to kind of the blockchain trilemma, but they've made trade-offs. Unlike non-custodial Bitcoin wallets where users control the keys to their own Bitcoin, all of the funds will be held by Zap themselves as an intermediary, similar again to how PayPal and every other exchange functions. Now, except for decentralized exchanges, of course. Now, as such, Zap will effectively function as a custodial service. It's going to be responsible for running and operating the necessary Bitcoin Lightning infrastructure, and it will be processing all of the transactions and complete Lightning Network payments on behalf of the app's users. All the app user does is authenticate their payment network, which is secure on their own end, and utilize the app. Now, the difference between how Strike functions and how a typical bank completes a transaction is that the payment or transfers made happen in the background over the Lightning Network rather than through traditional wire transfers or banking networks. This is what allows you to have instantaneous settlement. Apps such as Zap Strike can help boost adoption and use of the Lightning Network. However, some are going to object to their centralized custodial approach to payment processing in the crypto space. Now, while that is true, more sophisticated users who wish to claim more complete control over their assets can just as easily enough move and manage their Bitcoin in private wallets as required or run their own Lightning node. And that's likely going to be the future of forward-facing consumer-friendly solutions in the space that to have these, we're going that they're going to come at the cost of decentralization, but ultimately will operate in parallel with Bitcoin's fundamental features of permissionless, permissionlessness and censorship resistance. So to make that very clear, what Zap has created here with Strike is very similar to the same function that everybody utilizes every day, and that's going to be a centralized exchange. The beauty of Bitcoin, in my opinion, is that we can stand to have alternatives. OK, we just have seen, I think, the Peter Schiff brings to highlight a very good point. And I've had time to think about this a lot. Now, again, the reason why I purchased Bitcoin in the first place all the way back in 2016 was to have censorship uh, resistant, permissionless, unconfiscatable funds. That's why I hold my st that's why I hold my cold storage in or excuse me. That's why I hold my funds, the majority in cold storage, except for what I'm actively trading on exchanges. 
And there's a huge difference between my trading account and my investment portfolio. I invest in Bitcoin. That's Bitcoin that isn't touched, hasn't been touched. Now, the reality here is my grandmother is not going to be able to run a full node. It's not going to happen. She doesn't even know how to do email. Nor is she going to be able to set up a lightning node. So in her case, somebody who isn't putting a lot of uh, money into the system anyways, uh, into Bitcoin anyways, uh, Coinbase is probably her best bet. Coinbase is probably her best bet. You know, and we're moving into an era where these, well, particular exchanges, things like Coinbase, um, are not Mt. Gox, right? They're not Mt. Gox. They're not Binance. So there is something to say for that. And the reality here is that Bitcoin itself, the underlying protocol is permissionless, censorship resistant, and you can instantly just say, hey, you know, I'm going to go, I'm going to go set up my own cold storage, run my own full node, do lightning. I'll do all that. I'm ready to make the transition to power user. And specifically, we're talking about a, um, a more centralized model, a centralized model to allow individuals to, to allow an opportunity for mainstream adoption of cryptocurrency and lightning node usage, which is what we need and what we want. And the reality is, remember how lightning, how lightning channels work the point of lightning. It's to allow you to do instantaneous payment. So we're not talking about holding your entire Bitcoin stack on this. We're talking about your checking account, a couple hundred bucks for the most part for most people so that they can easily do micro payments and day-to-day -day transactions. And again, I think the next the next step from here is an easy bridge, although it's 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 ridiculously simple uh, for a Ledger Nano X or some other cold storage wallet. So you go to Coinbase, you purchase your funds, you either hold them on Coinbase or you pull them into your Ledger Nano X. And when you need to top up your wallet, your Lightning wallet on your mobile phone, it's just as simple as a click. So I think, although there's a big part of me that wants to be like, ah, oh, centralized. I mean, come on, man. Read the tea leaves. You know, we're not going to get we're not going to get more mainstream adoption unless we have very simple, easy to use options. And all of these things that come with full decentralization will come again. The ability, the, the, the key point here is choices and options, choices and options. And I am down for giving people choices and options, especially if it make number go up. And last time I heard more market participants equal number go up. So let me know what you guys.